Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Powerful Conversations. I am your host, Ambassador Alicia Staley. And as always, I am so excited to be with you guys on today for another episode of Powerful Conversations. Um, don't forget this weekend, that's right, the time change. Don't forget to set your clocks forward one hour. Yes, you lose one hour of sleep, but you'll have another extra hour of the sun. But we're here today and I have a guest. Her name is Dr. Sandra Webster, and I'm gonna bring her on. But before I do that, I wanna let you know, if nobody has told you that they love you today, know that I love you. Do you feel loved when you come on? As you come into the chat, I want you to um, let us know where you're coming in from. Type in the chat where you're coming in from, and we're going to bring in our guest on today, Pastor Sandra Webster. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Excited to be here today. Well, I'm excited to have you with us today. Pastor Sandra is the pastor of Total Restorations Ministry, and she's also the leader of Titus II Women's Ministry, and she's been pastoring for 20 years. And we were talking um, one day at her birthday celebration, and I was like, you have to share your testimony. She started sharing a little bit of it. So she's here today to do just that to share her testimony, but as you come in, and I'm gonna do the same, um, share the broadcast, share it with somebody. We want her testimony to go viral, to let people know that what God has done for her and in her life, he can also do for you. Because he says what? I have no respect to persons. And God wants to do it for you. It's the enemy that wants to keep us bound. It's the enemy that does not want us to reach our destiny. It's the enemy that does not want us free. But guess what? There's liberty in the house today. I want somebody to type in the chat, there is liberty here today. So Pastor Sandra, I am gonna get you, go ahead and start your testimony. God bless you, uh, Pastor Janice Pruitt. God bless you, woman of God. Uh, go ahead, woman of God, and share your dynamic testimony. It's powerful, you guys. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you again, Ambassador, for having me on. It's a privilege and an honor. And um, and yes, um, God has done such an amazing like it, I, I, I'm like my hometown, my family, my friends, people from my hometown that know me. Um, they know there's a God. Right. Because yes. uh, they knew me uh, B B BC before Christ. And so when they see me here today, um, you know, uh, they know that there is a God from where God brought me from. And he has truly brought me a mighty long way and to God be the glory. I just yes. want to say before I get started, before I share my testimony, I do want to say that people ask me all the time, you know, you've been uh, pastoring for 20 years and you've been serving God and doing, um, uh, you're a conference speaker, retreat speaker, um, you run a shelter for women and children. And so um, all these years, why do you continue to share, you know, your testimony in detail of what God has done in your life? And Ooh. I I say to the people out there is that because we understand that that addiction is a great spirit stronghold, uh, a prison that is keeping many, even in the church, um, uh, in bondage. And so, you know, um, I feel compelled to share it because um, I think that it's a continual uh, rising and growing epidemic in our world. And the church is not exempt, you know, from this uh, attack of, of addiction. And so, and so that's why I continue to share it. And I'll get into that more of what God uh, gave me to share with you guys about my testimony. So um, it was back in 1989, I was 18 years old. I was introduced to uh, crack cocaine. And then later at the age of 23, I graduated to heroin and, um, and then pills and then alcohol and marijuana. And I mean, what, if you said it in front of me, I was gonna do it. I was just that 
uh, type of attic um, <laughs> that um, I just, you know, I had just lost all touch with reality and morals and all the things that I was raised with, all of the values and morals that I was raised with. And so addiction took me, you know, down roads uh, that um, I'm not proud of today. Um, and it made me become something, but I was consumed uh, by the stronghold of addiction. I welcomed that demon of addiction into my life, you know, and so it, it, it became a stronghold and you become a puppet, you know, you become a puppet to addiction. And I know a lot of people don't understand that, but you become, you become controlled by the demon of addiction. And mm -hmm. so in the process of that, um, my addiction, I had, um, uh, there was many times, um, uh, this one particular time I was, um, I had been getting high on crack cocaine for a number of days. I was sleep deprived. I was, uh, I had eight in, I don't know, four or five days. I hadn't slept in four or five days and I was, um, at a dope house and I was getting high and I, I don't even remember. I mean, this house was like a, considered like a new Jack, uh, city kind of house. There was drug dealers, there was rooms, there was prostitution going on. There was just, it was just, had, it was a big house with different rooms and everybody had their, you know, they were doing whatever they were doing. And I was in this house and I, um, I had been sleep deprived and, you know, eat deprived. And I began to, uh, get high. And, um, I just, I don't remember. I just remember, you know, getting ready, uh, to get high and, that's all I remember. Um, mm -hmm. And so next thing when I woke up, I was in another house. It was a house across the street. Um, and um, So this was the next day? It was no, a, a whole day had passed? No, no, no. This was like matter of maybe, I don't know, minutes, minutes. Okay. This is yeah. So I, I, what happened was I fell dead. I OD'd in that house. And so because it was a trap house, a, mm -hmm. a whore house, a dope house, they had a connection with the woman across the street. So they're like, okay. we can't let this girl bring heat to the house. So we got to get her out of here and relocate her body, you know, to the house next door. So people carried me over to the house next door where when I was brought back to life, I was mm -hmm. dead. Um, I was brought back to life. Uh, people were, were trying to resuscitate me. They had ice. They were putting ice all under my neck, on all of my chest, all of my back, on my legs. And I didn't, you know, um, when I came to, I didn't know what had happened. I just felt these people putting ice all over my body and I freaked out. And I, it's crazy, Ambassador, because for a minute, I had lost my memory. Okay. I was just with these people uh, just a few hours before all this happened. I completely did not know who they were. I thought they were trying to hurt me when I came to because they had ice all over me and they were putting ice and I started punching them. I started punching them and fighting them and kicking them. And they were like, calm down, calm down. And I just ran out the door. I just, I, I, I had no shoes. I ran out the door. And as soon as I got out the door, a police patrol was turning the corner and they stopped. And they said, um, they said, uh, excuse me, stop, stop. And so they began to interview me and ask me what my name was. Ambassador. I did not know my name. I had lost memory for a minute i didn't know who and I what did was. they think when you when you didn't know your didn't name know where i was when you didn't know your name what did they say how did they um, respond they just said they just said you we had got a call that there was a dead body um being transported to this house right here they said is that you and i said i don't know what you're talking about and, um, um, you know, because, you know, in the streets, you have a street code. You don't, you know, tell right. people stuff. Right. So, but I gave myself time. As they were asking me questions, 
I gave myself time. All of a sudden, it, it clicked on me, and I said my name to them. And I didn't have okay. any ID, and they said, well, do you have any I identification? And I said, mm -hmm. no, I don't have anything. But long story short, long story short, um, um, I, I I didn't stop getting high. I continued mm -hmm. on my drug uh, pursuit of drugs. And mm -hmm. I ended up in the county jail because I used to steal in the stores uh, to support mm -hmm. my drug habit. So I would right. steal the merchandise out of stores uh, to the dope dealers. And mm -hmm. so um, anyways, I'm in the county jail. I got caught for petty theft in the county jail. There was a prostitute that was there. And because I didn't know what had happened to me, I, I asked her what happened. I asked her, I said, you know, her name was Margo. And I said, mm -hmm. what happened to me that day? What, what, you know, because I didn't remember anything. Was she and there she with you? Died. She said, you died and they were trying to, huh? Yeah, she was in the house. I, she witnessed everything. But, yes. but you, were, you, were, you were in jail at this time. There's yes, just a little I had, delay. I had, on, I had reconnected with her in the county jail. Okay. 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 Got it. Yes. And so and so in the county, in the county jail, I asked her what had happened. And she said, um, you were dead. And mm -hmm. they said that they needed to get you out of the house so that you wouldn't um bring heat to the house. So they relocated mm. you and she said, you're lucky that you came back to life. She said, because mm -hmm. they said that if you didn't come back to life, they were going to put your body in a trash bag and drive it to the river and dump your body in the river. But God, but God, and I want to ask to the people yes. that are listening, yes. Uh, if you're listening right now to share this broadcast, because it's all about setting somebody else free. A lot of times we want our loved ones yeah. to be free yeah. and that liberty may not come through you. It may not come through your, uh, you may be a pastor watching, you may be a leader watching and your child's deliverance may not come through you. It may come through a broadcast of somebody hearing a testimony such as this. You may yeah. be sitting in the county yeah. jail right now watching this someone has by some way God has allowed you to see this to know that you too could be set free that that is not your end it may just be a a comma but it's not a period it's not the end for you so as you share I want you to say I've shared just type in the chat I've shared as you share the broadcast because I know that somebody is going to see Pastor Sandra Webster sitting here all beautiful and not looking like what she's been through, but say, wow, there is a God. There is change for me. Change is a possibility for me. If God did it yeah. for her and what she's been through, my God. And as far as you sell, sharing your testimony, it brings glory to God. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And when he brings us out, he wants us to forever. We never get too big for our testimony. He wants us to forever let somebody else know. Yes. I too can be set free because the reason he did it, sometimes we go through trials and we go through tribulations, not for ourselves, but it's to let somebody else know God did it for her. God did it for him and he can do it for me. So Pastor Sandra, go ahead. So they didn't want the heat. They had to get you out of that house. Um, you are a liability at that point. Yes. And they yes. were talking about dumping you in the river. Yes. 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 But and God had another plan. <laughs> yes. You know, it's crazy. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. He put you in the river of living waters. <laughs> That's what he did. He, 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 he put you in some water, all right. The water that washed you and cleansed you. <laughs> His spirit. I yes. Glory. His spirit. Glory. <laughs> yeah, you got you got in the they, you got in the water. I got baptized, all right. <laughs> but go ahead. So, so um, you know, um, and it's and and just you know, also too, because I definitely, as you mentioned already, this story is not to glorify 
the devil is to glorify God. Amen. So, you know, it's to glorify that there is a God in heaven yes. that loves us, that is, is cheering for us, that believes us, even when we're at our deepest, darkest moments of our lives, where we think that there is a God that, you know, couldn't possibly love someone like us because we have a past we've done made a lot of bad decisions we've done a lot of wrong but that's the farthest from the truth because mm. i used to think like that there can't yes. be a god that could pass possibly love a woman like me that has made so many bad choices that has done mm. so much wrong in her life and and but god but god you know um and so that leads me to to that leads me to um to um share this part as I get ready to um you know head for a close but you know um because of my a criminal record I I I found myself back in the county jail and being sentenced in, uh, to prison in the time that I was in prison um um I um I I knew about Jesus I was raised a Catholic but I knew of Jesus, but I did not know Jesus, right? Like it makes personal, a difference. It like makes a, a difference. Personal, right, like my personal savior. I just knew Jesus as the baby on the manger on Christmas, right? That's as far yes. as I did not know him as healer. I did not know him as my savior. I did mm. not know him as my deliverer. So I'm in the county jail. And um, it, we're in a big dorm of 50 of, of 100 women a hundred women. And so there was a lady that was coming in and doing Bible studies. And I was like, I was like, but in, when she would come in, you had to sit on your bunk for an hour and a half. And mm. I have, I have like ADHD, right? I can't mm -hmm. be still mm -hmm. <laughs> pray for me. Uh, uh, but anyways, uh, but anyways, I'm like, I'm not sitting on this bunk. I'm going to this Bible study. I'm not going to be sitting on this bunk. So I attend the Bible study. It's, after like maybe the fourth or fifth time, she come and play worship on a guitar and she would okay. share the word of God. She would share the word of God about the fourth or fifth Bible study ambassador. Um, I just felt diff I felt a nudge. I felt convicted. I felt like I was sin like I was a sinner, right? I felt mm -hmm. conviction, a conviction I had never felt before. And so I begin to, I begin to um I begin to, um, that day I invited Jesus, you know, a lot of people, they go to a church and they get saved. They go to a revival, they get saved. They go to a conference, they get saved. I, God found me and saved me. And I invited Jesus in my heart in a County jail with the orange jumpsuit and a number and Jesus, uh, uh, uh Jesus began to, he, I felt the presence of God all over me ambassador listen to me listen to me i felt the presence of yeshua hamashiach the presence of holy ghost overtake me so much i just began to weep and i i invited jesus in my heart and for the first time i think i was 19 or 20 at the time i, mm -hmm. I for the first time with the jumpsuit and an inmate number i mm -hmm. felt free I felt free and My I didn't God. feel like I was in jail. I didn't feel like I was in jail. I felt like I, I, I just felt free. I, and I knew that God did something in my life. And I began to, from that day forward, I just wanted, I, be, I felt like the Samaritan woman. I just wanted to start mm. telling everybody about Jesus. I was driving the girls in the county jail crazy. And when I got <laughs> out of prison, because I started telling them about Jesus, like, hey, dude, yes. I met a man. I met a man who who knows all about me, who, who, who knows my past. He knows the ugly parts about me. He knows my hangups. He knows my hurts. He knows mm. my bad choices. And yet he demonstrated a love. He touched my heart. And I'm not the same. And I want to tell you about a man that did it for me. You give Jesus a chance. And I just started preaching and teaching and, and became a jailhouse prophet, pastor, <laughs> a teacher in the county jail. And these ladies are thinking like this girl's lost her mind, right? And so you wait a minute, you did lose your mind and you took on his mind. 
Come on now, come on now. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And I and and I just you know want to encourage somebody because the the my t sharing my testimony is not to glorify. Let me say it again. It is not to glorify the work of the enemy. It is mm -hmm. not. It is to glorify that there is a God in heaven that loves you no matter where you find yourself this morning, that he is the hope. Our world needs hope right now. And God wants to yes. offer you a hope, a hope that there's hope for the drug addict. There's hope mm -hmm. for the prostitute. There's yes. hope for the backslider. There's hope for the homosexual. There's hope for the broken marriages. There's hope for the liar. There's hope for the adulterer. There's hope for the atheist. Listen to me. No matter where you find yourself today, there is hope through Jesus Christ who gave his life on the cross so that you and I can be redeemed, reconciled, and restored by yes. the blood of the lamb and be forgiven of our sins. Amen. And so I just want you to know that, you know, there is a God that, and there's nothing you have done that would, that would make God reject you. There's nothing, nothing no bad choices that you've done, no hangups, no habits, no hurts that you, mistakes that you have made that would make God reject you. Uh, on the contrary, Beloved, I'm here to tell somebody, God is waiting with open arms for, Amen. You to come to him, for you to come to him, for you to acknowledge your sin, to confess, God, I have messed up. I have made a mess of my life. I have been making, been ro rock, rolling down the road of, of, of destruction. But today, God, I'm inviting you into my life. I'm inviting yes. you into my heart. I'm inviting you to be the difference maker. And, and, and he will do it. He will accept you just as you are. You don't have to wait to go get everything right and get everything correct. All of your mistakes, get, uh, get you know, change your life before you come to God yes. or before you come to church. And I'm not even talking about church. That's come religion. On. I'm talking Come about on. coming to Jesus, coming to the Savior, Jesus, and inviting him in your heart. Amen. And as you do that, you're allowing God uh, to begin to have his way in your life and begin to yes. love you. He wants to love on you. He wants to show you his magnificent, unfailing love that in spite of everything that you've done, you know, my family, you know, God bless their heart. They had given up on me because I had been in my my mess for so many years. I they were just like, "There's she's not going to turn around. She's too far gone." But I'm here to tell you that when everybody left out, Jesus came on in. Amen. And he you know would what? do it. It he was yes. It. it was. I want you to also tell them about your ministry that you have for women. Yeah. Tell us yes, about. Yes, tell us yes. about that. I want you to tell them what God has done through your testimony, through your life, and uh, yes. through your restoration and deliverance. Yes. Yes. So um, when I got out of prison, after a few years, I entered into a Christian discipleship program. And I knew that it was God's will that um, I, I, you know, God will begin to give you your purpose as you serve him. He will begin to give you what you're called to do as you're following after him. And he began to show me, Sandra, you are going to, um, I want you to open up a house for women, mm -hmm. just like you, who, who feel hopeless, who feel their life is a mess, who feel mm -hmm. like, you know, everybody else has given up on them. I want you to open up a house where they can come and get restored. And so God, um, so through, through Jesus Christ, I opened up a house in 2002, mm -hmm. uh, a, a total restoration ministry house for women and children that are homeless, that are that are, are fighting and battling addiction, prostitution, coming out of prison, um, women who, um, some of these women have lost their kids through DCFS. And so God has asked me to, um, you know, to, to um, now run a women's home. And I've been doing that for the past 20 years. And it has been an honor. And the success stories that have come out of this yes. women's home, 
women who've gotten their kids back, women who went back to school and got their degrees. When uh, I mean, I mean, just so many women, women who um, uh, went and moved out and got their own house. And so, yes. And I remember people. a couple that got their home. Uh, uh, they got that through your ministry. They yes. left the program and got a yes. home. Now, if yes. someone wants to come into your program, how do they get in contact with you? Well, I'm on Sandra. If they want to be considered. Uh, right. Yes. I'm on Sandra Perez Webster uh, Facebook page as well as Instagram. And so um, you can contact me through there or we have um, a number. It's uh, Total Restoration Ministries office if you want to do. Um, if you have a loved one or you yourself are battling with homelessness and addiction, um, we have a number. It's 909 753 7073. You can also go on to Total Restoration Ministries website. It's www.totalrestorationministries.com and you can contact us those ways. Now, yes. is it for men and women or just women? Um, actually, actually, it, it was for men, but God has asked me to close that down. We didn't have a home director. So for a season, we're going to close okay. that down and we're going to just focus on women and women with children. So, yes. Okay, now tell them about, because we have a couple of minutes before you have to go, tell them about your conference you have coming up. Yes, so I do host bi-monthly um, women's ministry. Um, no, your Titus conference Church. is coming up, your conference. You have a conference coming up, right? Yes, in October. Um, it's our- Okay, August I thought August. it was coming up next week, no? No, oh no, I am I was invited to speak at a conference. Oh, oh okay, yes, I thought I'm that was sorry. your no, conference. No, no, no. No, 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 you're right. <laughs> I got so many things. I got like, you know. Uh, so, yes. yes, we are doing um, this uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. at Total Restoration Ministries. We are hosting a conference at 7 p.m., 420 North Reservoir, Pomona, California. Three nights, powerful, impactful, Holy Ghost. A uh, uh, move of God. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, this we this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday called Run with the Vision Conference. We're gonna have some dynamic speakers, dynamic worship, dynamic testimonies, and we're just believing God for a mighty, mighty move of God. And so you are welcome to join us um, in Pomona. Um, and again, you can find uh, information regarding the conference on our website or on my Facebook page. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so, Pastor Webster, I am going to, uh, first of all, thank you again for coming yes. Um, yes. on today and sharing your testimony, because I know that somebody's life is going to be transformed through the power of God. Amen. by you sharing Amen. what he did for you. So would Amen. you pray us out? Would you pray for the people? Sure, sure. First of all, if there's somebody at the sound of my voice that don't know Jesus, you know, I never want to assume, I don't take every opportunity to invite people to the Lord because this is what this is about. This is about bringing souls to him. And so if you, wherever you're at, if you would just repeat this prayer to me, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart. That you are the son of the living God. That you are the son of the living God. I ask you, Jesus. I ask you, Jesus. To forgive me of my sins. To forgive me of my sins. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Father God, I speak of Father God in the name of Jesus that whoever is listening to this audio, whether they or they have family or loved ones or friends that are battling addiction, my God, I pray that my testimony give them hope that it's not over that it, this is not the final chapter of their life, yeah. that God can do a miracle if they would just open up their heart and begin to um, allow Jesus into their lives. And, and so I pray that you break, my God, the sin of addiction. I pray that you break the stronghold of addiction. I pray that you break, my God, every, every habit, every yes, mindset, yeah. every... I pray that you bring healing to the hurting, to the brokenhearted, my God. Those who may have recently lost a loved one, my God, through the COVID, my God. I pray that yes, you bring God. healing 
to the brokenhearted, those who are being challenged financially. I pray, my God, that you will meet every household need, that you will step in, my God, and be Jehovah Jireh, my God, their provider, my God. And so I thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, that many who hear this testimony, my God, that they are going to find, they are going to invite Jesus into their heart. And they're going to know that there's a God that loves them, that they're going to know that there's a God who is for them, that there is a God who has not given up on them. And so I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're going to use this, my God, to point people to the cross of Christ, my God. And I thank you, God, that salvation is going to is is going to uh come because of this testimony lord god and healing and deliverance is going to come because of this testimony and i thank you that ambassador arlisa is going to hear of lord yes. god the testimonies that somebody yes. brought their family uh to this broadcast to hear this testimony and yes. gave their life to jesus thank so we you. thank you we glorify you and we use everything, Lord God, of our lives to exalt none other than Jesus yes, himself. God. To him be yes, glorified, God. to him be lifted up. Yes. And in Jesus name, amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Sandra. We thank you for coming on today and your t- testimony. Never, please never stop telling that testimony. It's, it's powerful. It is, amen. It is amen. powerful. Like my Amen. mother said, we ne- we my mother, you know, we say when we get older, you never outgrow. I'm still your mama. You know, you say that we never outgrow our testimony. That's right. <laughs> we oh, never man. outgrow our testimony. <laughs> so listen, everybody, we thank you guys for tuning in. And um, don't forget to like the page, Arlesia Staley Live. Um, so as God brings on other awesome guests and other testimonies that he can be glorified and that he can be, again, so that he can be glorified through the testimonies that God brings to this page. So we will see you back here next Saturday. This was a special show for today, but next Saturday at uh, 1130 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, We love you and we will see you back here next week. Bye-bye and God bless you. And remember, you are loved.